good morning. It's another beautiful day on the farm. I've already got bread made. It's on the counter rising now. And we're gonna go take care of the sheep. I need to move their fence and get started on chores today. You can see they've really depleted what they have in here. They ate it down very, very well. And you can see where they couldn't get to, where it's very green out here still. So they need to get moved. I usually try to pair up moving the fence with milking. I'll give her a little bit extra grain. I'll leave her locked in the milk stanchion and then I will leave sugar locked in the pen so that I can really quickly close my fencing while I move it so they can't get out. I think I've discovered too one of the issues I'm running into with my fencing that I've been having is that there may be gravel under the grass here that I will have to get up. Um, that may be part of the reason why I'm having trouble getting my fencing into the ground and getting it to stay in. Sometimes Margo will pull her head through and get out while I'm trying to move the fence and that can be very stressful so I try to move as fast as I can to get the fence moved just in case. She didn't get out today so let's let them out and get their fresh grass. I don't know if you remember when I told you that I found a car battery coming out of the ground while I was mowing. Well, I couldn't find it again to dig it out, but. There it is. I don't know why. What do you think, Miss Margot? They love this patch in here. This is one of those piles where uh, there was like a bunch of garbage piled up in there, clothes rack sink all kinds of stuff and it was just all grown over with brambles and I was having a hard time getting it out and so they helped clear it out so I could get a lot of it out there's still some like pieces of pallets and stuff in there I need to get out but I'm gonna let them eat this down and then hopefully I can get enough of the big pieces out that I can run the mower over it then the last thing I need to do is move the energizer and check um, the voltage and then we should be good in this space for about a week maybe even a little bit longer because this is a bigger space what i am really enjoying about sheep is i can leave something like this out here for ellie to sit in and they're not going to eat it they leave it alone this is goats who are going to eat the clothing on your body and anything that they can touch <laughs> all right let's take this milk inside I'm still getting about three quarters of a quart in the morning. I dropped evening milkings because there's less light and I just did. <laughs> so I'm just milking in the mornings right now and I'm still getting uh, about a gallon a week. There was one day this week I had to run back inside and get another jar because it was overflowing the quart jar. So, you know, it depends on the day sometimes, like anything. It just depends on 
factors in the environment and everything, and we're still getting good milk. That is great. So I'm just going to go around to the other side and make sure it reads the same. Oh, that's a little bit lower. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's better. I was going to say if it's low, I may have to go back over and trim some of the branches. There are some branches touching on that side. I want them to clear out some of that brush though, so I wanted to have some of it like accessible for them to eat because I will have to go back through. I'm still trying to save up to do the rest of the perimeter fencing and I need to clear out the edges of the property to do that too. So they are helping. Can you believe it's already nine o'clock and my day started at six this morning and I still have more chores to do. Doing the bread did put me in moving the fence. It took more time. It normally, I normally have my chores done by now, but when I have all that other stuff going on too, it takes a little longer. So next I need to go let out the raptors. Now I've got to go refill their food and water and then they should be good to go for right now. And I have a wasp nest <laughs> that is building in the little hut over here. I pulled the roof off yesterday because they stung me, but they are still swarming in there. So I ran out of spray. I'm gonna have to go get some more spray or something. We'll get that taken care of. I've got to scrub out the sheep's water and get that refilled too. Get them some fresh water today. Eggs on the other hand, I am not getting eggs and I cannot figure out what's going on. My um, lion dot is very obviously molting and some of my golden comets are older. Um, one of them is two and a half and one of them might be older, but the barred rock is laying. I know she's laying. My Easter eggers are not laying or they're hiding them, but their combs are also very pale. I've checked for mites. I've made sure there are no raccoons or anything getting in. I left the camera out here last night to make sure I've left them locked up for a few days to make sure they're not hiding eggs somewhere again. And I'm getting one to two eggs a day. So I'm not quite sure why they are not laying right now. These girls look kind of rough though. These ones definitely look rough. They will not sleep on the roosting bars. Um, and so I was thinking mites just because of how raggedy they're looking, but I've checked them for mites. I've checked the coop for mites. I don't see them anywhere. And everybody else looks very healthy feather wise. So she's molting. Don't mind her. <laughs> Poor girl. She's just got feathers falling out everywhere. Poor thing. So I'm not sure what's going on with our egg production right now. But I was play I, I was thinking I'd be swimming in eggs by now. But um, my new golden comets are probably gonna stay locked up today because they are on week 24 and I have not seen a single egg from them. And the, some of them are still squeezing through the fence and getting through. So I wanna make sure hiding them anywhere because they might be hiding them somewhere and I can't get to the other side of the fence on the neighboring property to go hunting in the woods. Aha, they are laying, at least two of them. We have a little injured bird we need to take care of. I went out this morning to get everybody fresh food and water and start our day and I noticed one of my birds was being attacked by the other birds in my tractor. Um, this particular breed I've talked about before, the phoenixes, they're not my favorite. They're really big bullies um, and they it's not the first time that they've hurt each other. So um, I pulled this one out of the chicken tractor 
this is going to be a little bit graphic so if you don't want to see the injury go on and skip ahead but the phoenixes um have several times pecked off the back of each other's heads and it's um it's not a spacing issue it's they are just mean mean birds so i am not breeding them i am not uh adding them to my flock but i haven't called them so they're still here you can see they pecked on her little head. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I have some cornstarch in here. It's a great thing to have on hand. It will stop bleeding. If chickens see red, they will peck it. So if any of your chickens are injured or hurt and there's blood, they will peck at it and make it much, much worse. So we're gonna put some cornstarch in here. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my fingers and tap it on there. bleeding stop and it'll be better I promise okay Mommy. yes baby I know the cats freaked out the cats are coming to say hi to the chicken okay back up this chicken is scared so I need you to stay backed up okay I'm just gonna put some stuff on her boo-boo so if you can cover up a wound or if you can't, you need to remove that bird from the flock because they will continue to hurt that bird until they kill that bird. None of my other breeds of chickens have ever done this. The only time I've ever had this happen is with the Phoenix chickens, and it doesn't matter if I have two in there or eight in there. They will just batter each other until they peck the back of each other's heads off, and it can get pretty bad. So I've got her set up indoors. Having a large dog crate is another great thing to have if you're going to have animals like chickens or something that you may have to separate so that you can take out somebody who's injured or a broody hen or any of those things. I'm gonna show you just a quick little setup that I have indoors for her for right now. When I have baby animals or a injured animal, I like to be able to keep them inside. Part of the problem was they were keeping her away from the food and the water as well. So just separating her and letting her have time to heal and having access to food and water is going to make a big difference for her. If I had left her in there and they had kept her from the food and the water, she would not have made it. Eventually when I get the barn redone, I wanna have a spot in there that I can house um, sick or injured animals while they're being cared for or baby chicks what? and different things. Eventually it's on the plan to have that in the barn. I am going to go find a sheet out of my gardening stuff to cover the crate that will give her a little bit more um, privacy and darkness she'll feel more comfortable having that um, as she's resting and recovering she's standing up this morning that's a great you feeling better we'll give you a little bit more time and then we'll put you back out with your friends okay friends friends don't peck each other's heads off so funny because I was just reading this thing the other day about how we personify animals with human emotions and stuff and they don't have the same human emotions and relationships like we do. And it's kind of funny when we try to make them fit into the way we think that they should behave and act when they are in fact animals. So it's been a few days. I brought her back out with her food and her water and I put her in the small chicken tractor. I don't immediately put them all back together. I like to have where they can see each other through the fence for a couple days before putting them back. Thanks for hanging out with us on another day on the farm. We'll see you next time. Bye.